Oh, 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 it's you. I see you fixed my alarm clock. I'd rather it was on a timer, though, if you don't mind. Open your pocket and get a timer from the advanced logic section of your gadgets page. Connect up that button to the input and the output to the wobble ball. The timer also has a reset button, so it's probably best to connect a button to that as well. You don't want to be that ninny who never turns his alarm off. You can tweak it to set the time it takes to become active. If things get all confused, you can update its current time to something more sensible. The input action sets how the timer behaves. A start-stop timer will count only when it has an input signal. When it's finished, it will produce an on signal. A forwards-backwards timer will count back to zero when it has no input signal. A start-count-up timer will begin counting as soon as it has an input signal and produce an on signal once it's full. However, a start-count-down timer will count back to zero and produce an on signal until it's done. Well, pull my hair and call me Susan. Look at the time! It's getting late. Oh, my! That rings a bell. Yes, 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 I'm awake, thank you. You can turn that racket off with its reset button. Of course, if you don't connect an input, the timer will just start straight off, so make sure you're in pause mode. You'll also find the counter in the advanced logic section of your tools bag. That button will increase the count every time it becomes active. Tweak it to set its count. Once it fills up, it will output an on signal. Now, in a moment, I'm going to uh, pretend to go to sleep. Pretend. Right. Oh, oh, that's nice. Mm. Mm. Oh, five minutes, please, Mother.